Let me share something with you. I travel all over the world and perform with musicians from different backgrounds and cultures, whether it be jazz, classical or pop. And many times when I perform with these musicians, I perform under the banner of East meets West. So for example, Kuljit Bamra and Andy Shepard, Kuljit Bamra and Joanna McGregor, Kuljit Bamra and Alex Wilson, with the Villiers Quartet, with Orlando Consult, with Davide Giovannini, East meets West, East meets West. And you know what? Every time I perform with musicians under the banner of East Meets West, I ask myself the same question again and again. And that question is, haven't we met before? Why do we keep meeting? Why does East keep meeting West? Can we please move on and do something a bit more exciting like shake hands? But I think I have a reason for why this dynamic is in place. And here is a possible reason to explain why we're stuck in this East meets West scenario. I believe that Indian music is shrouded in a cloak of magic and mystery. And that this is a cloak that was left over from the Victorian times. If you think about the Victorian era and the British Empire, India represented the land of silk and spice, magic rope tricks, flying carpets and people sleeping on beds of nails. And interestingly, the Victorian times was a time of magic. Many of the concert halls played host to illusionists like Houdini and magicians. People loved magic, the Victorians loved magic. What's interesting though, is that the Victorian time was also a time when people had a lot of answers to things. There was the steam engines being created. The Telfers and the Brunels were building roads and bridges. There were scientific breakthroughs. So the Victorians, I'd imagine, probably felt that they knew the answer to most things. But my theory is that people don't want the answer to everything. People want to believe in magic. In my opinion, the West is still mesmerized by the magic of the East. And us Indians are very good at selling that magic to the West. And therefore, the vicious circle remains in check and East keeps meeting West all the time. Now, let me clarify something. It is not my intention to dispel the magic of music because I really believe that music is magical. It's something that you can't explain fully. It's something that you can't see, yet it can make you dance. It can make you cry. It can make you laugh. But the sort of magic and mystery that surrounds Indian music prevents people from finding out about the nuts and bolts of how it works. For me, that's a problem. I, I, I really would like to see music <coughs> being taught in colleges and schools. I'd like to see more people playing Indian instruments and I'd like to see it being taught in a way that is simple and easy to understand without the magic and the mystery and the complication. That's my dream. So I'd like to invite you to join me on this journey of exploration. And while we're doing that, um, I will do my best to dispel the magic and mystery of Indian music in such a way that it's easy for you to understand. So let us demystify Indian that was a drum roll. Indian music. This mist is doing my heading. Can we get rid of it? Cut. <laughs>